The subject of a photo can be made to stand out from its background with various editing techniques. An interesting approach is through the use of contrasting color tone. In this video, I'll show you some examples of how to do it. I'm using Affinity Photo 2.0.4. In this video, we'll be relying mostly on applying a contrasting color tone to the background. We'll also adjust brightness and contrast and add a little blurring in some cases. Our approach will be subtle, maintaining a fairly realistic look. You, of course, could be more extreme. Here's our first image. Our strategy with all three photos will be basically the same. We'll first select the subject, then we'll invert the selection so that everything but the subject is selected. In other words, the background will be selected. Then we'll apply a contrasting color tone to the background, lower its brightness, and in one case, apply a slight blurring effect. And with some photos, we'll also alter the brightness and contrast of the subject. This first photo will be covered in depth. The following two will be done quickly, serving simply to illustrate the versatility of this technique. We'll be using the gradient map adjustment to alter color tone. I have another video entitled Playing with Color Tone, which covers this adjustment in detail. If you're not familiar with the gradient map adjustment, it might be helpful to watch that video first. I'll leave a link to it in the description for this video. So let's begin by selecting the subject of the photo. We'll use the selection brush tool for that. By default, add mode is turned on. This button on the context toolbar should be indented. Click on it if it isn't. Next, we want to make sure snap to edges is turned on. There should be a check mark beside it. This will make the job of selecting our subject easier. Let's adjust the size of our brush using the square bracket keys and begin painting on our subject to select it. We'll do a rough selection at first. We don't have to be too exact for now. We'll refine our selection in a moment. Okay, our basic selection is done. Let's click the Refine button up here. The area we selected looks normal while everything else is taken on a red cast. Let's zoom in on our subject by pressing Command plus key or Control plus key in Windows and look around for areas we missed. Notice the Refine Selection dialog has a variety of adjustment brushes, matte, foreground, background, and feather. We'll try to do as much as we can with matte. We'll use that to paint around the edges of our selection, giving Affinity a chance to improve it. If we need to add an area to our selection, we'll set it to foreground. And if we need to remove an area, we'll set it to background. After changing the adjustment brush, you might find it helpful to click somewhere outside of the photo so you can see the brush again before painting with it. This is a bug in Affinity Photo 2. We'll be making subtle adjustments to the background, so our selection doesn't have to be perfect, just good enough. I think we're okay. Zoom out by pressing Command-0 or Control-0 in Windows. Let's click Apply. The subject has been surrounded by marching ants. We want to alter the color, tone, and brightness of the background, so we need to select the background. From the Selection menu, select Invert Pixel Selection. Now everything but the subject is selected, which means the background is selected. Our first order of business is color tone. The background and the subject have a warm color tone. To help the subject stand out, we'll apply a contrasting cool tone to the background. Click the Adjustments icon at the bottom of the Layers panel and select Gradient Map from the drop-down. Note that when there's an act of selection, any adjustments we add will be applied to the selected area only, which in our case is the background. 
Notice the colors red, green, and blue in the gradient map adjustment dialog. The left side represents shadows, the middle, midtones, and the right highlights. This means red is being applied to the shadows of our image, green to the midtones, and blue to the highlights. Looking at our image, it's apparent that there is only a few areas with a light shade of red since there is not much in the way of shadow in the background of our image. But there's plenty of green, midtones, and blue highlights. To create a cool color tone in the background, we'll apply dark blue to the shadows in our image, a slightly lighter blue to the midtones, and an even lighter blue to the highlights. We'll begin with shadows. Click the leftmost node to select it. Now click color down here and set it to a dark blue. For the midtones, click the middle node, click on color, and set it to a slightly lighter shade of blue. And for the highlights, click the rightmost node, click color, and set it to an even lighter blue. Let's change the blend mode to color. We'll only be using the color blend mode in this video since it works well for color toning, but do experiment with other blend modes on your own. Now let's reduce opacity. Around 25% looks really good. Let's turn the gradient map adjustment off and on so we can see its effect more clearly. It's subtle, but it's definitely helping the subject stand out from the background. Now let's lower the brightness of the background a bit. Click on the adjustments icon and select brightness and contrast. Let's reduce brightness by around minus 14%. That's looking good. Let's turn it off and on to see the difference. Now let's slightly increase the brightness of the subject. First, we need to reselect the subject. To do that, select Invert Pixel Selection from the Selection menu. Let's add a Brightness and Contrast adjustment. Increase brightness to about 4%. and contrast to around 14%. Let's press Command D, Control D in Windows to clear the selection and get rid of the marching ants so we can see our image better. That looks great. Our subject is standing out and we've maintained a natural look. Let's select all the adjustments we made while holding down the Shift key. Now let's turn them all off and on to see the total effect. Looking good indeed, and the photo has a different feel to it, more somber in tone. You can continue making adjustments to the gradient map and the other adjustments we've added if you wish. Here's our next photo. The flowers, which are the subject, are already selected, so let's go ahead and invert the pixel selection to select the background. Red is on the warmer side, so we'll want to contrast that with a cooler tone in the background. Let's add a gradient map adjustment. We'll leave shadows as is and apply a light blue to the midtones in the background and a light green to the highlights. Let's set blend mode to color and reduce opacity.
around 34% looks good. Now let's reduce brightness. About minus 17% is about right. Let's reselect the flowers by selecting Invert Pixel Selection from the Selection menu. Now let's adjust their brightness and contrast. About 13% brightness and 6% contrast will do. Press Command D or Control D in Windows to clear the selection. Let's turn all the adjustments off and on. Our changes for this photo are more pronounced and the mood and feel have changed accordingly. Our last photo, the background is already selected. Notice that in this photo there is already somewhat of a contrast in color tone between the subject and its background. The subject is definitely warmer while the background is cooler. Let's simply accentuate the cooler color tone of the background. Now let's reduce brightness. And let's add a slight Gaussian blur. Click the Live Filters icon at the bottom of the Layers panel and select Gaussian Blur. Place a check mark in Preserve Alpha to preserve the borders of our image. And let's increase the radius to around 4. That's a great effect. The subject is almost glowing. While this technique may not be appropriate for every image, it does open up a lot of possibilities. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.